What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. It has been a while since I made a video for you. Today, I wanna dive right into the topic. It's based on a question I get asked almost on a daily basis, and that is, how do I handle my aggressive, defensive, crazy snake that wants to kill me? This can be from a variety of reasons. I've done videos on this, but I wanna dive more into the tools we have available to us to manage these situations and reading the snake in each situation as opposed to just using my bare hands like I do. I wanna get your confidence up and your understanding of the snake so you can manage and handle these situations much better. I first wanna clarify that I don't like the term aggressive, but it's the, it's how it's being phrased to me, is people think that these snakes are aggressive, they're, they're, they are just defensive, they're afraid. This is what is, is causing this bite reaction from these snakes. What I get, and I see this all the time from newer keepers and more kind of mid-level keepers that haven't experienced this, is they're just afraid to build that confidence. And that's what we're trying to do here, is, is show you what you can use, things like gloves, things like snake hooks, sweatshirts, it's just stuff that you have around the house. Maybe you don't have a snake hook, but we don't need it. I'm just using it in case you have it. And I wanna build your confidence so that you feel more comfortable learning about the snake. Ultimately, I'm gonna get bit a lot. I'm gonna get a bit so many times in this video. That is the goal. The goal is to show you that it is okay as long as we use the right tools to our advantage. Simple stuff, gloves, sweatshirts, snake hooks, paper towel rolls, whatever it may be to get in there, take the bite from the snake like a champ, but at the same time, you're not gonna get hurt. And that's where your confidence will be built. You're gonna be able to handle these snakes in situations where they are defensive and realize that, okay, that is what just caused that bite. This certain thing I did, whatever I did to move it, this is how I can get away from the bite. This is you know, how I can manage this snake when it's in this state of mind. And that's really the whole sole purpose of this video is building your confidence around these snakes that wanna bite. Before somebody says it in the comments, no, this doesn't apply to anything venomous. This doesn't apply to anything that can kill you with one bite. This is strictly boas, you know, pythons, colubrids, whatever it may be that you need to build your confidence. Don't do this with the king cobra. I think that's kind of understood. Let me go get a snake and let's dive into it. The first snake I'm going to use is this baby snake. You can see the size comparison to my hand. You can see its S position. It's ready to strike. It doesn't know what I'm doing to it. I have my warm hands kind of hovering around it and it wants to bite me. This is usually where people fail. Right now, I'm doing the common keeper mistake or new keeper mistake by hovering around this boa and it's making it afraid. It doesn't know what is happening. Now, I'm gonna use the tools I have available. This is just a thin pair of mechanics gloves. I think I got them for about $3 or $4 at Harbor Freight. So we're just gonna throw these guys on. They're very thin. And why I wanna emphasize the thin glove is that one, it dissipates the heat from your hand. And then two, these snakes have tiny teeth. They're not going to bite through it. Now, of course, this snake isn't gonna bite now that I have it on video. We'll get some other ones. But you just see this snake is just Cautious, it doesn't know what's happening right now. For people who are gonna ask, this is a hypo jungle that is het for blood and sharp. This snake is available, but you know, beautiful boa, cool looking eyes, but it's just nervous, it's just afraid. It has no idea what I'm doing. I have warm hands hovering around it. Now, a glove like this, I'm trying to make it bite, but it doesn't want to, is it's just curious, it's just checking me out it won't be able to penetrate this glove. This is just, this isn't a special glove, this is just a thin layer. These things have small teeth. It can't bite through a sweatshirt and break skin. But the whole goal of this is to show you how you can build your confidence. By just hovering around this snake, it's, it, it's I'm learning what to look for in this animal. So, and I'm learning what I can do and what I can't do. If it bit, that would actually be an ideal situation because I learned, okay, that just got it nervous enough to bite. Right now, nothing I'm doing is making this snake nervous enough to bite. It's maybe cautious, it's trying to check me out, it's sniffing around. All of this is part of a confidence building episode with the snake. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. And you know, it, it's still cautious, it's still curious, but 
the nice thing about these thin gloves is I don't lose my dexterity. I don't lose my feeling. What can make a snake like this even more nervous is if you start squeezing it because you have on these big, thick, heavy welding gloves like a lot of newer keepers will use. They're just so afraid of the bite that you don't even realize what you're doing and the snake is making it worse. So these thin little gloves, I still have my feeling. This snake is slowly checking me out. And this was just a whole positive episode. I could hold this snake for 15, 20 minutes and it's totally relaxed now. It's starting to go up my arm. Still a little cautious, still a little nervous, but it's over me. It says, okay, I'm not, I'm just gonna try to get away now. I'm not gonna get hurt. Let me go get a couple more and we'll do the same thing. We have a perfect snake for this situation. And this snake is nervous, it's defensive, has no idea what I'm doing. It's just, it knows it's cornered and it wants me to leave it alone. It's trying to be as intimidating as possible. It's hissing, it's biting, it's, you know, it's, I'm not feeling anything. The, the key to this is you don't want to pull away when it bites. And that's why I, I strongly recommend using things like gloves and thin gloves to build that confidence. Because if you pull away and it bites, you could really hurt the snake. But by allowing it to bite the gloves, it's not a good thing, but at the same time, it's not harming the snake. You know, it, it's, it's latched on. If it thinks it's maybe a mouse at this point, but there's zero harm to me. The, the snake, yes, it's a little psychologically stressed. That's obviously not something I'm trying to do, but I'm hoping that with this video, by maybe stressing out a couple snakes here, I, it's one, it's gonna calm these snakes down for customers who may purchase them, but two, when the customer gets it, they know what to do when you get your snake, whether it's from me or from somebody else, you know what to do in this situation. Right now, it realized the biting wasn't working. It's just trying to get away. Now, it may turn around and try to bite me again, but I'm slowly building its confidence to realize that, hey, that wasn't so bad. When I put this snake back, it's gonna remember this. It's gonna remember that biting didn't necessarily work. That's not the goal. The goal is for it to remember that, hey, I didn't get hurt. So this snake is just kind of chilling out. If I put it down again, now I'm hovering. I have my warm hands around it, but it, it's, it's already, 30% better than when we first picked it up. It's, you know, slowly just cruising around. Now, if I hover my hand over here, it sees warm, it gets nervous. That's not the goal, but the goal is to make it realize that, hey, I didn't get hurt by that warm thing that was making me nervous. And, and still very responsive, very reactive. You can see how kind of, if I go near its head, it's gonna, sh it sh curls right back up. That's, that's what we're trying to get this snake over. Let's go grab one more and let's upgrade to something bigger. Perfect situation. This snake is in shed. I already know this one's almost always fired up and it's actually pretty calm right now. I know that's gonna build because every time I go to clean its cage, it goes wild. This snake is a hypo blood uh, that's also jungle. Really pretty, it's het sharp. It's just one of my favorite snakes that I made. Still not sure if I wanna keep it back and when it sheds out, it's absolutely spectacular. But you know, again, we're just slowly building confidence in these snakes. Another thing that doesn't help is I'm on this smooth surface, which they generally don't like. I would recommend, you know, doing this on your bed or something that's large on the floor is even better. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, carpet or just generally just anywhere on the floor, that way if the snake does decide to freak out, it's not gonna fall off your bed and cause a, a traumatic incident for the snake. It's not gonna fall off your table like I'm doing right now. It's, uh, you know, I have the camera on the snake itself. One, because you guys don't want to see me. And two, because I need to focus on the snake. So already it's getting better. This, they're just nervous. They, they don't know what to think. This snake is, is a good situation because it's, it's in shed, its eyes are blue, and it's already in this nervous situation. So I think we get the point with these smaller snakes. Let me put this back, upgrade to a larger snake. We're back from the small stuff, but before we dive into a large adult snake, let me show one more tool because this is what you're gonna need when you get into something bigger. A small snake you can keep within your hands. A large snake is gonna be on your arms. So now you have to protect your arms. As you see, I have a t-shirt on, but I'm just gonna add the addition of a sweatshirt. We're we're back and I have a snake that I know is fired up all the time. We're gonna go through a couple of these. She's maybe four and a half feet or so. She is an adult boa, but she's a dwarf locality. She's one of my favorite boas I have. It's such a shame she's so cranky all the time and so nervous. I'm gonna use a hook because that's generally what I do all the time. I will rarely use a hook like this. The only time I use a hook like this is if I have a really large snake, a big Burmese python. This is my go-to hook. It's just an 18 inch hook. If I can figure it out, I'll put a link to in the description to where you can buy these on Amazon. 
It may not be this specific one, but it'll be something similar. They're low cost, you know, they're only maybe, I don't know, $15, but to me, they're very important, especially to turning off that feeding response. So every snake we've looked at so far has been defensive, aggressive, angry, whatever you wanna call it. It's been that way because they're just nervous. I wanna show you a feeding response and how quickly a tap on the head can turn that off. I will do a whole tap training video. That's gonna be another topic, but this one's gonna be strictly towards just building your confidence. Again, wearing the sweatshirt. You don't need to do this all the time, but the purpose of wearing a sweatshirt and wearing the protective gloves is so that you can learn what is causing these snakes to bite. You can watch them bite. They can physically bite you, but you're gonna be building your confidence in the process. So this girl, I'm surprised she hasn't gone crazy at me yet. This is, watch this be the only time she's never gone crazy, but I'm gonna do a quick, simple, just tap on the head. I wish you guys could see it. It's just me filming. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna purposely grab this snake how I should not. Now, perfect. So she just bit my hand. It did not go through the glove. It did, did get me to flinch. I wasn't expecting that. But she's kind of, you know, one of my favorite snakes. This is just kind of a, I call it special. It's, it's actually the mother of the first snake we looked at. I do think it's a genetic morph. I think it's new. Um, but again, just building her confidence. I'm going near her head. She's not a bad snake. She just gets nervous. And, and it's a shame because she's beautiful. I have her out all the time. But obviously, I'm not going to be down here in a sweatshirt. Now, one thing that you just saw me do is I'm keeping her away from my face. Uh, I don't want to get bit in the face. She is crazy. I probably should have put on a little thicker gloves because I did just feel the tooth through this this uh, other part of the glove. But that's it. I'm just building confidence. You know, she's she's just nervous. And I'm just, you know, I'm trying to keep her away from my hands. The goal, again, isn't to get bit. It is to show you how to take a bite. Right now, it wants to bite. Good. I'm going to give it my arm. You know, something like that that it can't get through. And just slowly, over time, this snake will become better and better. Right now, it's, it just doesn't like to be handled. It's just one of those snakes. If I handled this snake every day, it would calm down and it would be great. I'm just, that's it. She wants, now she's through with the biting phase. She will still bite and she is going to still bite, but she's trying to get away. I have her cornered. She's nervous. She's just trying to do her thing and, and she doesn't want to be bothered. She wants to be left alone. This is actually a good time. I can palpate for follicles because she's out. She's got them, so she will breed for me this year. She's still a little bit young. I sh actually, she's not that young. She's probably, like I said, four and a half years old. Uh, she's a 2016 female, and uh, she is a dwarf locality, so she will breed smaller, she will breed younger. Now, one thing I wanna look out for is I don't want her to bite my wrist that's now exposed. Uh, if she does, it's fine, but it just, it'll make me bleed. So she, I think let's let's put her away. Let me grab another one that I know is also crazy like this. We have another crazy snake. This girl is a little bit bigger. One thing I do want to show is I want to take off, well, actually, I want to show two things. These are never to handle snakes. Maybe if you're going into the venomous realm, you'd, you'd have something upgraded. These are my feeding tongs. These are to hold rodents and feed them. I would never want to grab a snake like this and pick it up. So let's just get it out of your head that you're going to use this to pick up a snake. Uh, especially a boa or a python. So let's just put this aside. It, <laughs> she's fired up. I'm already getting her there. And I want to take off my gloves first just to show you that what happened to my hands. I haven't taken them off, but I felt a couple teeth. Uh, nothing major. It actually softened the bite quite a bit. When you get to a boa about this size, the four or five foot range, their teeth are getting a little bit longer. A baby snake isn't going to bite through these teeth, through these gloves, especially if you're in a colubrid or something like that. For a boa or a python, their teeth are growing with their body. Obviously, these thin gloves, I should probably upgrade at this point. Uh, I don't have another pair of thin gloves. I literally bought these just for the purpose of the video. So let me get rid of this, take the gloves off, do an up-close view. So I got a little tooth that I felt on my hand, and that's only because this glove has a mesh right here. And I got another little tooth on my knuckle there. Maybe one more over on this side. Again, all where this mesh part is, it's nothing. It, you know, I, I barely call that a bite. It did get a bite in all fairness of this video. So you guys don't come back and say, hey, I got bit. Uh, maybe you get a glove that's a little bit more robust than this for if, if you're dealing with a larger snake. But let's get into this girl here. 
The, this is a uh, 2017. 2017. She's a hypo blood, or she's a hypo het blood. Sorry, hypo jungle het blood. Really pretty girl. Again, I'm gonna use my hook here. If I didn't have this, I could use a roll of paper towels. But I'm just gonna tap her head. Just kind of use it to keep the head away. So again, this is when you, you, the snake's a little bit bigger. But let's get her out. She's gonna bite me because she wants to, like always. But you know, a much larger snake. She's probably five feet and. Big key is keeping their head away from you. Or I should say away from your face. You don't want to get bit in the face by any snake, but uh, especially over a snake, once they hit that five foot range, their teeth get much larger. So she's just trying to get away. She's probably gonna turn around and bite me at some point. I wish I had a camera person here so I could do better zoom ins and things like that. But uh, you know, it is what it is. She's, you know, she's not, again, not a bad snake. She just doesn't know what the hell I'm doing to her. She doesn't realize that I'm just checking her out. I, I actually want to get her out of the cage. I want to let her stretch. I want to let her do her thing. She's so used to just kind of being in there and trying to bite me and kill me every time she sees me. We'll do again. Wow, she's got really nice follicles. So she is going to breed for me this year. She's about four years old. Like I said, she's a 2017, early 2017. It's 2021. It'll be 2022. So she'll be about four years old at that point. Or I should say maybe four and a half, almost five. Um... But yeah, just a cool snake. Again, this is what I want to show you, is mannerisms, what she's doing. She just turned around, look at her S pattern. She wants to bite, but she did just try to bite. She doesn't want to bite to hurt me. She just wants to bite, so I leave her alone. So I guess you could say she wants to bite to hurt me, but the goal is for me to put her down, let her be, let her do her thing. Beautiful snake, awesome tail, you know, nice jungle stripe on her tail, nice jungle head, beautiful blushing all over her side. She just saw my face, she's turned around, but I'm just using my, my strength to keep her away, keep her away from my, my head. It's nice and shiny and bald now, it gives her a good target, good warm target. So again, beautiful snake, awesome boa. Let's dive into maybe one more and we'll call it a day for the video. Here we have it. Hopefully you guys have learned something in this video. We're gonna do one more snake here. This is a 2017. She is a Central American fire T positive hypo. Uh, always fired up, always defensive. She's ready to bite right now. Uh, that that that's just a. I'm hoping you can get a good picture on the S, but she's so honed in on my hand right now. So what I'll do, kind of just turn her, turn myself. Right now she's just focused. I want to get her away from the heat of my body, use my elbow, use something to just refocus her attention. Um, again, she's not, she's just, she doesn't want to hurt me. She just wants, she's afraid. That's it. You know, I'm going near her head. If she bites, it's fine. I got my gloves on. She's a little bit smaller. She's the same age as the other one, but she has that Central American blood. She may breed this year. I prefer them to be a little bit bigger. I probably won't breed her this season. I'll wait till next. There's no reason to rush it. Um, if she does, just happen to have fantastic follicles, I'll go for it, I'll try it. But um, again, she's a four year old or so female, really pretty snake, just, they're just misunderstood. So the goal of this, show you guys some big snakes, show you guys some baby snakes, build your confidence to understand what makes these snakes nervous, how to get your confidence up. And now when you go back into this, now that you've gone through it with a clear mind, you're still gonna be nervous. The snake's still gonna bite. It's always, it's just our normal reaction. We don't wanna get hurt. We don't wanna get injured. It's just what happens. So it's okay to be nervous. Just be consistent. Use it with confidence. And I guarantee you within a couple weeks of gentle handling, she has some actual nice follicles too. I'll do a video, If I had a video on how to palpate. So if you guys are interested in that, it's an old video. I'm trying to remake some of the old stuff, uh, but Beautiful girl, just a nervous, misunderstood, scared snake. And another cool trick that I do sometimes is when you have a nervous snake, especially a young one, pull them into your body. Uh, use your body to your stomach to tap their, their, their nose. It just kind of calms them down for some reason. It makes them, I feel like the head and the nose is somewhat of like a reset button for a snake. So if you tap their nose, they flinch. It's this most sensitive part of their body. It's what, if that gets damaged, the, the snake can, can, you know, obviously they can't live. They, they mess up their face. So I'm not saying slam their face, but just gently, slowly move them in. I have the snake here, just kind of hug them. You know, hug them with yourself. And that tends to calm them down. They get more body contact from that. And I think that's it. They don't like being suspended like this unless it's on their terms. So that's the other thing that makes snakes nervous. 
I'm going in, grabbing this pit thing up, and I'm giving it two points of contact. You always want to try to give as much point of contact as possible. Use your arms, use your body, use the bed or something that you're sitting on, and uh, you never want to hover over them. So it's kind of important. Another key is that I'm standing up here. I'm not towering over the snake. I was when I put it down, which will make them nervous. But now that it's it's here, I, so I just touched. She's not used to having her head touched. She just flinched. I don't know if you saw it on the video. Go back 10 seconds and rewind it right before I said that. You'll see a quick flinch. You'll see that I touched her right here. But through time, she's, I mean, her whole mannerisms right now are, are just so much better. She's still nervous. She's still honing in on my face because she just forgot what we were doing. Um, but just, she was just enjoying that. And that's the key to, to just socializing a snake and building your confidence. It should be enjoyable, should be fun. She'll eventually calm down again. Um, hug her, and that's it. We'll put her back, we'll close the video out. We're back, I know this was a long one, I talk a lot, but I hope that everybody watching these videos got something good out of this. Don't be afraid of these snakes, especially if you use the right tools. If I'm on a job site for work, I have a hard hat on, I have steel toe boots, I have all the right protective gear, just in case. I think the whole concept of shaming people for wearing protective stuff, for wearing gloves, for using hooks, that should just be eliminated. I would never go onto a construction site and make fun of somebody for wearing a hard hat, for make fun of somebody on a steel tower wearing a harness. It's just to prevent what could happen. When you're handling these snakes and you know it's aggressive or defensive or, or just has a strong feeding response, Put something on, put a sweatshirt on, put some gloves. There's no, nothing is manly or macho about getting bit. I mean, I get bit all the time. Big keepers get bit all the time. It shouldn't be something that, oh, I got bit. Let me take a picture and show everybody how much blood. It just happens. So use our tools to our advantage. Use snake hooks if you have them. Use gloves. These things are so cheap. I got them, again, three bucks, four bucks at Harbor Freight. You can get them at the dollar store. Just thin gardening gloves. Nothing, nothing crazy. The whole point is, and then upgrade it. The whole point of these thin gloves is to still have that feeling in your hands. Um, upgrade it accordingly. You know, you don't need to have the giant welding gloves on for a baby snake. If I'm handling an adult Burmese python that wants to literally kill me because it's so defensive and so nervous, then yeah, maybe I'd throw on some bigger welding gloves. I mean, that's just, again, if I'm going to socialize it, if I'm just gonna move it, we have tools, we have hooks, we have things to keep their head away from us, move it from one bin to the another bin to clean it, whatever, but if I'm in a socialization state and I need to have confidence in what I'm doing, use the tools we have available. You don't need to be in there with a big winter jacket and these giant gloves, sweatshirt, gardening gloves, we can get this stuff anywhere. So with that guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, watching. I'm gonna keep doing these videos as I have time. I'm not gonna promise weekly, monthly. I'm just, when I have time, you may get blasted with three of them in a week, or you may not see me again for another couple months. I'm real busy, but I also wanna make these videos for you because I get the comments back that you guys like them and you guys enjoy them. So that's what it's all about. I have some new snakes going up on the website soon. Make sure you check it out, www.jasonsexoticreptiles.com. Make sure you give me the thumbs up and the like. Subscribe if you're not. Hit that bell notification. And until next video, guys, I really appreciate you all watching.